Here's another little interesting point on squats. Um, and you, you know, you find a lot of things online. And one of my favorite slash most <laughs> annoying things are the comments online because they all start out, well, they commonly start out, some of them are questions, some of them are truly comments. Most of it ends up in fights amongst people that are sitting in their bedroom who've never done anything, commenting on stuff as if they're the expert of the universe. It's sad. Um, I think you should have to go to one place, like an annual commenter's fight, and go and actually have to face someone with this stuff. And, and let's just see what happens. It would, be, it would, so, it would beat the, the you know, ultimate fighting thing all to death. So anyway, in, in terms of a TV ratings thing, uh, or maybe just in my mind. But here's a picture, an illustration. I found this online one time. And I think, I think the article is entitled something like, how, how low should we go? How low should we squat? And so this, this article, it had, it had the thing about babies and how, low, and how they can squat low. And uh, I can't remember if it was recommending that or if it was just saying that, you know, here's, here's an issue, but anyway. Um, and we did a whole video on the baby thing, so take a look at that. But um, this, was at the, this was at the bottom of the article. And it said, here's what a squat, here's your back angle, boom. And here's your, how it's all folded up here. And here's how much, let's look at the issues here. Well, that's not you. It's maybe some people. But first and foremost, recognize there is no illustration that necessarily represents the entire population. Not everybody can fold up like that in the hip. In fact, depending upon muscle mass and or fat mass, either here or here, that's going to totally be influenced. Look at this proportion of this to this to this. Those are very specific, and I don't even know. You realize when you, do, when you draw on a... Did you ever watch Roadrunner? You know, they could make anything happen to that coyote. He would run off a cliff, and he would just hang there sometimes, long enough to look at you and look at the camera, right? And then fall with that cool noise. And then there was always a poof down there, right? And then he would look up out of a hole, or he'd be pancaked and walk around. You can do anything you want in illustration. You can completely obliterate physics and anatomy with an illustration. This we shouldn't even look at. If we get the general idea that this person, and we don't even know if the proportions were real, that this person could squat that way. I don't even, I'm not even sure it's a general, generally good idea to draw something like this. The theme of the article should have been not how low should you squat in general, as a population, or by the general rules of squatting. It would have been better served to talk about the influences that might affect that, including progression. One of the things I love talking about is the idea of full range of motion and how it's arbitrary relative to the exercise or specific to a sport, which means there's three lifts that require a specific range and you better have the structure to be able to pull them off as opposed to everybody should do it that way. And, and, and full range of control. Whether this per so there's a lot of issues behind, besides just how far down should you go? Should you reach this thing called parallel? Should you break parallel? Parallel is 90 degrees at the knee. No, it's not. It can't even begin to be. We say all these things, and we actually are somewhere between having no idea what we're talking about because the sound bite, the, you, know what, you know what a sound bite is, right? That's the problem. We learn three words, we learn a sentence, and we impose those on every situation, every person, like it was real information, like it was a fact. And that's the big problem with sound bites, guys, is you should go to parallel. That's a sound bite. That's not an objective or reasonable way to evaluate an individual's ability to do anything like squatting. So, and I know there's a bunch of people watching this right now going, he doesn't know what he's talking about. Yeah, maybe I don't as far as you know. But the big thing is, and if you're saying I've never heard this before, it's like, well, you know, there's a first time when you hear everything. There's always a first time. You having not heard it before doesn't make it not true, right? So that's what education is about. And that's what we try to do is we try to look at the realities of these things because all over the internet, and quite frankly, in most certifications, sorry, I know you love yours, in most university degree programs, there's stuff like this. I've got university professors saying, what's the best exercise? It's the squat, and it's on a test. What's the best exercise for who? What's the best exercise for what goal? None of these things make any, what does this person have and what do they actually own? 
What can they control? And what do they tolerate? Locally, systemically. Because these are real questions that really have to be answered if we're going to figure out what's right for a client or, or what's right for us. And, and I don't think they're that hard. You take what information you have at the time. You don't pay much attention to stuff like this. I shouldn't say that. Look at that. File it away. But don't ever look at an illustration and go, that's a reality. Certainly not for the entire population. Take a look at the structural differences video because you're going to see how, how varying everybody is. You're going to see what it take to do that. And no, I didn't even mention center of mass. That guy's got, well, I see a hand and it looks like maybe there's a stick. There's certainly not a big bar there. And there's certainly not a big weight there. It is just as likely that this person, if it was real, would fall backwards because of how much of his center of mass, which is probably, probably in here somewhere, unless his chest is much bigger than this, probably in here somewhere, this line would have to be equivalent to the center of mass. And we don't know in that person if it is. And if you're someone right now going, I learned in my certification, guys, I learned in my degree, the center of mass was in your pelvis. If the center of mass was always in your pelvis, everybody's falling when they squat. Everybody, because it's not over your feet. So center of mass changes based upon where your segments are now. The length of the segments, how they affect each other is related into that. This person would squat, if it was a real person, would squat very differently with this broomstick behind his back than he would with a couple 45s. And certainly if he had six 45s, it would all change. These are realities. And if they, if you're having an emotional response to what I'm saying right now, then it's because it doesn't align with your team or your team's sound bites. And you see, please realize at this stage of your education that you are not your information. We should be able to talk objectively about information and sources of information for accuracy and do it objectively. There really shouldn't be an emotional response. So if you've wrapped your identity up into sound bites, organizations, pieces of paper on the wall, then anything that doesn't align with that is going to piss you off. And that's not information and that's not education and it's not good for you physically in the gym and it's not good for your clients that we're supposed to be responsible for.